think about it. 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 What's up, family? This is your man, not your boy, bringing you another gold nugget that you could pick up or you could kick it aside. Tell me what you think. We got on my old military retired Air Force hat. We got on the Marine shirt. It's time for battle, family. Time for battle. Look, our old Marine Schiller, who they locked up in jail and just released pre-trial confinement, released him from it, is still awaiting a so-called court-martial. Now, it's sad to say they will court-martial him for disobeying an order. You know, you don't have freedom of speech in the military, which a lot of people don't understand. You cannot talk about your chain of command, even the president. And if you do, you will be put on charges for disrespect for a commanding officer. That's right. Did you know that the president is called the commander in chief? For as the military is concerned. Yeah. You have different laws that uh, you are under when you in the military. It's called the uniform code of military justice, the UCMJ. That's right. It's a code. Now, you heard it here first. The UCMJ, Uniform Code of Military Justice, is a so-called laws put in place for the military. That's right. You guessed it. The military personnel has two laws to abide to. That is the military law and the civilian law. And break one of them, you can be put on charges. So many people are kind of like wonder, trying to understand why is it that this Marine officer has been put on charges for speaking his mind about how the upper echelon did not come to the defense of those soldiers that were over there in Afghanistan. Well, it's because he broke a law. Now, not to say that I agree with it, but I recall in my day, never forget, I was about... 17 years in the military. Yeah, somewhere close to that. Maybe 15 years in the military. And we were sitting around talking about, of course, politics. And the subject matter kind of went on where people were kind of giving their opinions about the president. And one of the supervisors come rushing out of his office. And he kind of told us, is like, hey, let me put you on alert that you are talking about the commander in chief. And according to the UCMJ, and he blurted out where we were violating, that we could be put on charges. Now, interesting enough, I kind of knew that, but then we all tend to forget and we was reminded. Now, I'm going to say that when it comes down to the military, we need to understand that this UCMJ, that he will be going through a court martial. He will be faced with many a charges. Yeah, you know, because they put a gag order against him. And they call it a gag order. That's a civilian term. Basically, he was ordered to be remain quiet and he kept speaking. And he shared what he felt as though would be his view, his belief system in where he saw that the higher echelons should at least apologize for their actions and the decisions that were made when it came to the removals of, Af of the Americans from out of Afghanistan. But did it give them a right to share that? You know, this constitution of freedom of speech is not necessarily true in what we believe. Freedom of speech is only for those who has the so-called positions to say what they want. But who has the position to say what they want? It's all subjective. It is all subjective. Because we see that, you know, civilian news uh, casters and, you know, reports and these uh, people who call themselves Dems and Republicans and they can blast, you know, the commander in chief or the president of the United States or anybody else, you know. 
and nothing is done to them. But let you say something about some other group of folks. Some other type of sources. Seems like the whole picture changes. It seems like that you will be under attack for speaking your view. And they coming to take your head off. Now this Marine officer Schuler, he's going to have to go through the court martial. I don't know when you got other commanding officers who will be sitting on his so-called jury are going to have pressures on them to make the right decision. Because who do they answer to? Those ones that he spoke against. And to vote against your higher echelon, how many people will be brave enough like he was to put your career on the line? And so as he has this jury filled with officers and and a couple of uh, enlisted, I think it might be one enlisted person that will be on the jury. And the rest will be officers. They will make the decision Did he or did he not break a law in the UCMJ? And if they ordered him, he did. But if they told him he shouldn't say it, be quiet, he might have a leg to stand on. You see, I was in this position, if y'all have listened to my story, where I was told when it came to me sharing my spiritual beliefs that I should refrain from expressing it to my troops when they were in their time of need in their lowest point. And I took it as they didn't order me. They just said that it was advisable that I refrain from speaking such matters to the troops and keep it to myself. So I only see the leg that he has to stand on was, was he told? I wouldn't talk about that if I were you. Or was he ordered? I order you not to say another word about your commanding officers. Y'all remember the movie? I think it was a few good men or the movie there that where the enlisted troops were court-martialed for telling the truth. But yet they turned around and told them that you disobeyed an order. But then you told the truth. Yeah. It was very eye-opening to see that somebody can give you a supposed order that can cross the lines of the constitutional rights and yet be used against you to put you in prison. Isn't that something? And this right here is the so-called message that many military has to sometimes juggle when it comes to their belief systems. This is your man, or this is your sergeant, coming at you with another gold nugget that you could pick up or you could kick it aside. Think about it, 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 think about it.